G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to one of the strangest upgrades in War Thunder. This is the JA-37D and isn't actually much of a performance upgrade over the JA-37C which sits at a battle rating of 11.0. So a jump from 11.0 to 11.7 might at first sound kind of strange. But then you think about what this plane actually gets and there are two things that make this plane incredibly powerful at 11.7. First of all, it is still retaining the same radar, same engine, same flight performance overall as the JA-37C, but it contains a little bit of a secret, and that is the AIM-9L in the form of the RB-74, and of course it gets an absolute metric butt-ton of flares and chaff, which gives it the ability to stave off certain attacks that were not really that much uh, that, that viable, that feasible. And of course it allows for a certain more liberal playstyle being a little bit more of a sort of dogfighter. Now, the Vigan is one of the planes in War Thunder at 11.7 where you can use a lot of your AOA, meaning that you can pull very sharp angles and have excellent nose authority. This gives the Vigan a little bit of an up, uh, sort of an upside or a little bit of a, an ace and up the sleeve uh, compared to things like the MiG-29 and the F-16, which don't have good nose authority in War Thunder, although we'll get to that in another video. The Vigan D is pretty decent, actually. There are a couple of little things that I find a little bit annoying, or a little bit lacking, like uh, there is 120 mil, uh, or 120 degree radar and 60 degree radar, radar, but there is no real in between. I find it a little bit, just just a little bit too broad. I'd love like a like a 90 mil or something like that. Oh, sorry, 90 degree. I think that would be ideal. But you know, these are little things that we can whinge about all we want. But at the end of the day, these are very very excellent planes. The Vigan D is really, really strong, and I really, really like it. It's decently speeded. It's not particularly fast. In fact, it's the slowest 11.7, but honestly, I feel like it is more than made up for with its maneuverability and with its weapons. Of course, you do get a lovely little drop tank, which is just about to fall off in the video as we speak. Uh, this gives you a little bit more maneuverability, gives you a little bit more speed, but honestly, this plane has plenty to speak of. You'll very regularly C-1300. Uh, the only thing you will tend to lack in is engine power and acceleration. So don't expect to be sort of energy fighting F-16s uh, or even MiG-29s. I think that's a little bit of a fool's errand. Now, uh, in this case here, we are just sort of going right on into it and sending a few 9Ls. Our first victim here is the MiG-23. And of course, the other MiG-23 is looking super juicy. The first one misses, so we're going to hope that the second one hits home. And of course it does. Now, the RB-71s are the other missile that you get with the plane. And these are essentially uh, AIM-7E-2s. AIM uh, the AIM-7E-2 is not quite as long range as the uh, other missiles, the AIM-7Fs particularly. Um, I'm going to send myself an RB-71 there. That's a little bit of a waste, but you know what? It manages to get me the kill, and it's done a fairly good job at it. Now, this plane is excellent when it comes to being in the thick of the battle. It has the ability to pull, and it has the nose authority to get cheeky missiles off when it needs to, and to me, that is the main perk of this plane. The other planes that are in this battle rating at 11.7 that got added with this patch do not have that ability, and to me, that's a bit of a letdown. Now, of course, we can have a discussion all day whether or not it should be in addition to the game, but the fact of the matter is, this is the way that the game is played, and I'm going to review the game based on the way I see it currently, not based on theories and not based on what it should be. So the Vigan in its current state versus the MiG-29 and the F-16 is honestly excellent all the way down to about 400 kilometers an hour, where of course you'll start to lose out, and, if, and the, the Vigan, whilst it does have decent acceleration, uh, I wouldn't class it as particularly excellent or particularly strong, especially when you consider the other planes at this BR, or at least at this tier. So, our first victim here is this F5. Now, he's a little unsuspecting. Uh, flares at the very last second, but the AIM-9L is smart enough to know what a flare is. It's not an R60M, and of course, it is a really, really powerful missile. So, you know, you can use it to your heart's content. Now, I've noticed that there's a bunch of enemies that are sort of sitting in a big group, and I don't really want to dive headfirst into a group because I know that I'm going to get missiled straight away. So, I really just want to pick out like one or two people, uh, maybe see if I can wait a little bit for the battle to progress. 
Uh, I noticed that that F-14 is looking really, really angry, uh, and he's just sort of getting stuck right into all those enemies there. Um, he manages to also get stuck right into the floor, and that's a really good turn of events for me. Now, this F-14, I'm not really sure what he's looking at, but at about three and a half kilometers, I'm confident enough to release a 9L. I'm probably going to release another 9L here, and it is going to potentially track beautifully, provided that the F-16 does not switch off his afterburner, and of course, he does not switch off his afterburner, leaves his brain at home, and suffers the consequences. This MiG-23 could potentially sort of defeat this missile by notching or by doing some very spicy maneuvers, but unfortunately the only spicy maneuver he's doing is ripping his wing with the uh, missile to do all the work there for him. The MiG-29 is our last victim here, and he basically stands no chance in a low-speed dogfight, despite the MiG-29 in real life having some really good uh, nose authority, especially at the really, really low speeds. This particular MiG-29 is likely going to eat a missile, unless he pulls a very clever rabbit out of his hat. Now, unfortunately, he did bring his brain cells with him, and so rubbing those two together gives him uh, death anyway. Yeah. That's the kind of environment that you'll find in this cutthroat BR. Uh, an F-16 with an AIM-9L or an AIM-7M doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it manages to get him. The MiG-29 is definitely not a solo plane. And uh, by, ex by, by leaving a MiG-29 so late into the game, you really, really do risk the uh, <laughs> losing a lot of efficiency with the MiG-29. But the uh, Yachtvigen or the... I believe this is the Activigan, or at least the Vigan D. Uh, this plane is definitely a, uh, a group fighter, but can really hold its own in an individual dogfight as well. Uh, not so much as the F-14, but I certainly, or, or even the Mirage 2000. But you know what? This plane is pretty damn good. And instead of the uh, paltry four missiles that you get as the Mirage 2000, you manage to get yourself six of them, and six really does make the difference. And uh, as much as as much as you'd like to think that these missiles are, you know, they they're just missiles, you know, they'll they the potential for a kill. Uh, that potential is still better than not having them at all. So having six missiles is actually more of a benefit than you might first think. Uh, and that's why I go on and on and on about the F-14 being the king because no other plane at this BR has eight missiles except for Phantoms. And let's be honest, the Phantoms are not particularly the top dog at the moment. I might make a video later on, see how we go. Um, I do obviously want to post more videos to the channel, but it is very, very tough with a full-time job as well. Uh, touching grass is hard work, you know. Now, speaking of hard work, this F-14 is proving to be very, very difficult to shoot down. So difficult, in fact, that uh, I have a fire and forget missile heading straight towards his booty, and it does manage to strike home. The F-16 is also looking super juicy. It might be that he is engaged with the MiG-23, sees the MiG-23 as a nice easy kill, and then forgets the AIM-9L coming in to kill him. Coming from above is the best strategy for the AIM-9L, and is in fact the best strategy for any missile at top tier, simply because the opponents don't look up as much as they do look forward and down. So looking up and looking behind are kind of rarities you know keeping your head on a swivel is probably the best way to end up on the good side of war thunder uh, so if i can give anyone some advice it would be that now the other advice i'd give is use your flares because this f-16 might end up learning the hard way and it turns out that he does because it's very very easy to get kills on people who are not paying attention speaking of not paying attention this mig-23 is looking juicy but uh looks like i have to pay attention to these f-16s otherwise i'm going to die i switch off my afterburner start using those extremely large amount of flares and it looks like this f-16 is coming in for a kill i have to be careful i can pull a little further than he can but thankfully the mig-23 ml saves my bacon and leaves me to the f-14 the f-14 i can barely get out of the way and the f-16 who looks like is coming back is prime target here for an RB-71. The RB-71 is going to track very, very nicely, gets a critical hit, damages the elevator, but that's not enough damage to put him out of the fight. So I'm going to go around, and you can see the speed that I'm hemorrhaging here. Uh, it looks like the F-16A has finally hit the ground where he belongs, and now I've got one more enemy up and behind the F-16, 
it's uh, going to be tough if I can't get a shot. Now, I have to be careful of the sun, and it just seems like it's not going to work. You can see I'm just running out of speed here, coming up against things like the F-16. I barely get out of the way, and that's thanks to the lack of nose authority that the F-16 has in War Thunder. Um, I'm switching on the afterburner again, but I'm just sitting around 400 kilometers an hour, and I just can't do a whole lot. And that's what the limitation here of the Vigan. It's just not the uh, the sort of energy dogfighter that you might hope. It's certainly a turn turn fighter, if you will. It's similar in sort of properties to the Zero. It does like to get stuck in, or perhaps even a, a Yak just without the energy retention. But I'm really, really struggling here. You just see how much higher the F-16s are above me. I'm going to send an RB-74 or RB-71. Hope it strikes home. Use my flares. And this is the bonus of the F uh, the, of the the uh, the Yak Vigan or the Vigan D, and we are going to basically come in with one missile and potentially six kills away from this particular match. That's a pretty high margin, and honestly, this is a very very excellent result as we stand. Let alone what could potentially happen. Now, I don't think I'm going to be much faster than the F-16. The only way the F-16 is ever going to be caught by me is if the MiG-23 makes him do a turn. Now, the MiG-23 and the F-16 have somewhat comparable top speeds, especially when combat loaded. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bully the F-16 by using my track while scan and pretend that I've got a missile that is just about ready to come and eat his booty. Uh, hopefully, this will sort of have some psychological warfare effect where he will maybe look to turn, maybe he'll sort of run out of flares or something like that uh, and I'm so hoping desperately desperately hoping that they are his last flares I am starting to close the distance it looks like maybe the F-16 is not using his afterburner or is alternatively just running out of skill and it looks like the skill is going to head straight towards the F-16 and I don't think there's a whole lot that he can do he must have run out of flares run out of talent and of course he is now running into a repair cost six kills in the vegan this is something that i just cannot do with any other plane at top tier and i think that that is the secret of the vegan it's just so much better with nose authority and that just gives it such an edge in the battlefields at top tier and i think that's something that the f-16 and mig-29 miss that this really shines through anyway ladies and gents that'll do it for today thank you so much for the support if you'd like to support the channel further there are some videos up on screen for you to check out. And of course, you can always check out my Patreon, which is new and revamped. I have revised the tiers and hopefully I can find a tier that is suitable for as many people who would like to contribute. But unless you are one of them, uh, you can just leave a like. And I'm very, very happy that you do so. I'm also happy that you subscribe. That would be really, really helpful to me. But until then, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your time. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.